coming up. We didn't see a lot of summer, did we? No. Someone just having a chitty chat. Feel like there's something brewing here. I hope this wasn't my fault. I love the little giggle in ice cream as well. I mean, I still prefer doing a directed session where they go off and do it all themselves. How do you say that? Mark as a bun villain with very tight clothes on. I think that was maybe a note from, from when I did it. So, Mr. Bond. And now, enjoy the podcast. How do you say that? How do you say that? How do you say that? How How do do you you say say that? that? Hello and welcome to today's episode of How Do You Say That? Sponsored by BritishVoiceOver.co.uk. It's the show dedicated to anyone who's ever had to read a script out loud in front of a microphone. And here is my co-host, Mark (laughs) Rice. (laughs) <laughs> hello, hello. That was a build-up. <laughs> Wasn't it? Ah. So, fun fact time, and many people will know that Mark is a bit of a Trekkie. But not so many people know that his favourite captain of all time is... Da, da, da. Catherine Janeway yes. of the USS Voyager. I think she pretty much rewrote the script on, on being a captain, to be fair. Really? Second is, is Captain Pike of, of the, the new series Strange New Worlds. But I know, it's just, it's one of those things that people go, what, not Kurt? No, not at all in any wow. in any way for me. But you know. I have to confess, I, I haven't watched Star Trek since Kirk, so oh, I don't know any okay. of the subsequent. Fair. My sister's a big Trekkie fan, but not me. Well, my co-host is Sam Boffin, and her fun fact is that the summer before she went to university, she worked for Camp America as a counsellor. Yes. That sounds amazing. I did, yeah. It was good, actually. It was in New York, nice. and um, or rather, <laughs> New York State. And uh, so it was out in the wilds of New York oh. State. And it was... Really fun. I really enjoyed it. Well, of course, we also have a special guest. And this week from across the water, it's Northern Irish actor and voiceover Una O'Flaherty. Hi, Una. Thanks for coming on the show. Hello, Sam and Mark. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Absolutely lovely. Una is a Northern Irish voice actor with over 20 years experience in telling stories and making text come to life. Ever since taking up speech and drama, as a wee girl, she's long been passionate about taking listeners on a journey. Yeah, with academic accolades from Guildhall and New Era Speech and Drama, a graduate of Ulster University with a BA in Film and Media, she is well-versed in many roles both on and off the camera and on mic. She's an improv enthusiast and Una thrives on bringing (laughs) characters to life and making stuff up. This is going to be good for the podcast. Next only to her hobby as an international woman of mystery and also she's a keen sportswoman. What is an international woman of mystery, Una? (laughs) Uh, that might fall under the making things up, Sam. Uh, but okay. I, uh, I liked it, though. I liked it. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. I, I don't want to. I don't want to give too much away. No, obviously not. As an international woman of mystery, you're right. I should never have asked. I should never have asked. So, <laughs> Una, what is your fun fact? Uh, my fun fact is that for a long time, I was most often found on eight wheels uh, playing a sport called roller derby. Oh, roller derby! Amazing. That's so cool. Did you get a lot of bumps and knocks over over the years? Yes, I did. I <laughs> yeah. did. And wow. actually, if you go to Una's Instagram, you can see some pictures of her doing it. That's so cool. What were, what was your um, troop called? I, I was part of Belfast Roller Derby and oh, also so cool. the Irish Roller Derby squad as well. Well, at risk of being run over by eight wheels, let's have a look <laughs> at our first script of the show and ask, how do you say that? <laughs> How do you say that? Okay, then, uh, this is something that I did recently for a big pharma company advertising Mm -hmm. their vitamin B12 supplement. Mm. Slightly technical, but it's definitely towards the consumer as to why you would want vitamin B12. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is business to consumer, yes? Business to consumer, absolutely. It's uh, buy our vitamin B12 because this is the reason why. Okay, cool. So I'll do um, uh, just the read that I would do. Yes, if I got absolutely. This. And you're a vegetarian, so this should this, this should uh, ring true for you, shouldn't it? It should. <laughs> In theory. It should. I should sound as though I know what I'm talking about. Fair okay, enough. right. Let's have a little go. Are vegetarians and vegans getting enough vitamin B12? While choosing a vegetarian or vegan diet may have health benefits, there are also certain nutritional challenges. The recommended daily intake for vitamin B12 is only 2 micrograms, but you'd be surprised to know what this little amount is able to do in our bodies. Vegetarians and vegans can easily become vitamin B12 deficient simply because the vitamin is only found in animal food sources. 
if you consume a strictly plant-based diet, you're hard-pressed to cover your need for this particular nutrient. I like that. Now, that was quite, changed, it was quite like you did change a couple of words, yeah. And now I change body to bodies on the fly because I suddenly realised it doesn't make any sense saying is able to do in our body. Well... They did actually insist on body in the end. Did they? Yes. Mm. I uh, think but, that's wrong. I think they're wrong. I think that's wrong too, but they <laughs> but that's what they did, you know. And that and that's yeah. fine. Sometimes you get clients because I will I I think I gave them three different versions w- yeah. where I went bodies body bodies yeah. and they went no we're going to go with body. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things. It's also full of words that could be contracted. So the t- yes. the contraction debate happens again, doesn't it? Yeah. This particular client doesn't mind. Didn't contract. You contracted a couple. You said you'd be surprised. Oh, uh, did I? There yeah. you go. So, so the, <laughs> that contraction was there. Um, but this particular client doesn't mind as long as it flows. I, I thought that was a lovely read. I thought it was very nice and very uh, educational without being stuffy. Thank yeah, you. it wasn't ramming it down our throats, was it? No. Mm-mm. Which yeah, is always st- good. S- stuffy is, ugh, ugh. Yes. Yeah, nobody <laughs> wants to be stuffy, do they? So, Una, would you like to give it a go? I will, absolutely. Are vegetarians and vegans getting enough vitamin B12? While choosing a vegetarian or vegan diet may have many health benefits, there are also certain nutritional challenges. The recommended daily intake for vitamin B12 is only 2 micrograms. But you would be surprised to know what this little amount is able to do in our body. Vegetarians and vegans can easily become vitamin B12 deficient, simply because the vitamin is only found in animal food sources. If you consume a strictly plant-based diet, you are hard-pressed to cover your need for this particular nutrient. Oh, Sam, hasn't Una got a real storytelling um, yeah, really rhythm good. And, to her voice? It's beautiful. And you, you really punched up stuff that I absolutely did not <laughs> punch up. So that was that was really interesting. Yours was more educative i think than yeah. than than my and and mm-hmm. i was i was jealous jealous <laughs> of the <laughs> jealous of the particularly that opener you really made the most of the benefits and challenges which i think was correct yes agreed i think i lent too far into the conversational but i really liked what you did i i really uh, followed everything yeah i thought it was very very um educational how did it feel una well it's it's funny actually that sam you said that you thought i lent Or sorry, you thought you lent too far into conversational, whereas I actually thought in that beginning uh, paragraph that I lent maybe too far. Um, So something I I get a note on a lot is that I do tend to be uh, maybe a bit too... Friendly? No, oh no. Oh, the no. opposite. <laughs> the opposite. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe, maybe a bit too corporate. Co- but corporate, it, it's kind of a, a fine line, sort of corporate and yeah. uh, teachery. Yeah. Um, so I, I've been working on sort of how to be a bit more friendly, relaxed. I thought that. Well, I thought that read was quite friendly and relaxed, actually. Yeah. Oh. To be well, fair, then, yeah, it's too. working. <laughs> <laughs> the training is working. <laughs> The client, I think when you hear my read, you'll go, oh, that was actually really quite corporate But that's kind of what they have asked for. Because right. mm. you, you can look at this. Because bear, bearing in mind, if you're, if you're basically informing customers that maybe their diet isn't good enough and, and they need B12, mm-hmm. it should be more friendly than corporate, I think. Yeah, I would, I would agree. Yeah. Um, I think maybe, maybe a few years ago, they they maybe would have wanted to to tell people that this is how mm-hmm. it has to be done and yep. you're wrong if you don't do it this way. Yep. Whereas nowadays people listen more to someone just having a chitty chat. So yep. I guess that's yeah. that's kind of what we're all we're all maybe leaning towards. I think it's worthwhile pointing out that this is a foreign client. It's not a British client. This, um, mm-hmm. and so this has been translated from the original. But do you find then that the um, international clients you work with prefer a more classic approach then? Yeah, when some you're, of them, From certainly. your delivery, not just yeah. from the... Some, oh, really? yeah, much, much more so than British clients do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agree. Oh, I think Brits have moved much more towards conversational. I think the European clients probably haven't moved that far yet. Right. Certainly the people I work with anyway. Yeah, a lot of the European stuff I get are, are often character-based. Yep. And as a consequence, it, it are, are slightly different from... Um, Although I don't, yeah, thinking about it, I don't really know. Maybe it is slightly more corporate when I do. Yeah, yeah. Interesting anyway, interesting. 
Well, let me give you a more classic style that this client wants, and you'll okay. see what you'll see what I mean. <laughs> okay. Are vegetarians and vegans getting enough vitamin B12? While choosing a vegetarian or vegan diet may have many health benefits, there are also certain nutritional challenges. The recommended daily intake for vitamin B12 is only 2 micrograms, but you'd be surprised to know what this little amount is able to do in our body. Vegetarians and vegans can easily become vitamin B12 deficient simply because the vitamin is found only in animal food sources. If you consume a strictly plant-based diet, you're hard-pressed to cover your need for this particular nutrient. So yes, no, you're right. And what was interesting about that yes. is that it suddenly dawned on me that when you do it in that slightly more uh, corporate uh, way, yep. that our body works. Does make more sense in that style, and doesn't it? And if yeah. you make it conversational, then it's because you're being more inclusive, mm -hmm. our bodies... I think it makes right. more sense because yep. you're including me, yep. you, people in yep. general. Yep. So that was really interesting because it absolutely suited the singular there. My my thought on this, I wonder, have they kept it as to do in our body to keep it more scientific? Yeah. So maybe you, you have the option there. It it almost feels like you have the option to be chatty, but our body brings you back to the more sort of scientific. I don't know. Somehow it rankles with me. Our feels like more than one. That's why it yeah. annoys me. Yeah. 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 Our is. is you not would expect your it to say do in or... your body, wouldn't you? Mm, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's why it rankles with me, that, that <laughs> particular. Uh, I love that word, rankles. Rankles. That's another one. Rankles. Brilliant word. <laughs> it yeah. is. So, uh, yeah, it is interesting. I wonder if we can call this episode the one with the many rankles. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, if we're going to call it that, then I can't sit on this any longer. Oh, go on. Um, but it, it, as part of the script, this is an aside. This maybe won't make the final cut, but it <laughs> it rankles me that uh, the they say that the vitamin is only found in animal food sources, which isn't true. Mm. Um, mm. Because because they then say in the next sentence that if you consume a strictly plant based diet, you are hard pressed as to opposed cover to your impossible. Need. Exactly. Play. How do you say that? It is worthwhile remembering that these are real scripts, as we've mm. discovered they're real yes. scripts with lots of holes in which we've been working on, but we've changed the names and some details to avoid copyright issues. We have yes. So Una, what yes. about your script? You've bought us. Okay, so uh, this script that I've brought is a script that I did earlier in this year, mm. um, earlier in this year, earlier this year for <laughs> summer, um, which ironically, uh, we didn't see much of. We didn't um, see a lot of summer, did we? No. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I hope this wasn't my fault. I hope this wasn't some sort of... Uh, oh, you think you jinx summer, yeah. do you? <laughs> <laughs> so it's your fault. Oh, dear. Oh, Nobody dear. come after me. Uh, if you have any complaints, please send them to Sam and Mark. <laughs> so, yes, this... This is my uh, script for National Trust NI. So this is all about summer surprising you. Anything else that the client mm -hmm. told you that, that could help us out here? They wanted this to be a, a sort of uplifting. Um, I mean, <laughs> I'm laughing now reading the script. <laughs> could summer surprise you? Could it be raining all the time? <laughs> um, it did surprise <laughs> us, yeah. <laughs> it did surprise <laughs> us. It did. Um, so, yeah, they wanted this to be... Um, uh, upbeat and dreamlike, um, dreamlike, okay, and and really sort of warm, um, oh, right. uh, you know, to, <laughs> like the summer wasn't actually, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Warm. If you think of what the summer was and everything it wasn't, they wanted that. <laughs> and here's the here's, cool. here's the next horrible question: Is it a thirty seconder? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh no! I'm yeah, not so it's quick. It's quick. I'm no, not see, playing that that's, game. That's the question that Sam hates me asking because she doesn't want to do it in thirty seconds. <laughs> and did the director? tell you that they wanted could summer surprise you the same or different each time or was that up to you i think maybe that was up to me and i approached it that it would be different every mm -hmm. time let me have it I'll, I'll go first then sam and then you can show us how you did it una if absolutely that's okay. if i right, can here remember we <laughs> <laughs> here we go then could summer surprise you if you go with the flow could it thrill and delight you could summer surprise you 
If dreams take flight, could you soar like the birds do? Could summer surprise you? If you drink it all in, could the good times find you? Could summer surprise you? If you make time for play and an ice cream or two, could you leave your cares behind you? To find a National Trust place near you, search National Trust NI. Nice. Delightful. Yes. I tried to make it quite smiley. I hope that came across. It definitely did. No, it absolutely did. And and you 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 went for making them all very different, didn't you? I did. I literally yeah. chose to make them all different. And and the emphasis. I mean, the thing that we know about the title of the podcast. How do you say that? Is you know yeah. you can emphasize all the different words. If I'd have been mm-hmm. the director on that, I'd have yeah. probably said, "Could you take it down a notch and be m- m- more more relaxed?" But as you say many times, you know, as a first read, if yeah. you give more, you can pull back for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I have now remembered, and I'm sorry, Mark. If this <laughs> oh, sounds like a sabotage. Oh no, there's another big note coming, isn't there? <laughs> oh my god! No, I'm so sorry, but I mean, I mean, at least Sam will get the benefit of this. Um, <laughs> So it was written like a like a piece of poetry. Yeah, like poetry. I can see that. Yeah. And I just and as I was reading it again, I thought, oh, how could I have forgotten that note? I'm so yeah. sorry, Mark. Well, the poem rankles me. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh. exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh-huh. Could summer surprise you? If you go with the flow, could it thrill and delight you? Could summer surprise you? If dreams take flight, could you soar like the birds do? Could summer surprise you? If you drink it all in, could the good times find you? Could summer surprise you? If you make time for play and an ice cream or two, could you leave cares behind you? To find a National Trust place near you, search National Trust NI. Oh, lovely. And very poetic. Yes, absolutely. You brought the poetry right back to it. Love. I think I was a bit repetitive, though, if I was being really... Picky? I quite like that. I think because you lent mm. into the poetry, actually, that that lent itself to it beautifully. I don't. I don't think so. I think your your adjustment in pace really uh, worked. Yeah. You know, I, I I don't see that there's anything wrong with the the could summer surprise you's being no. similar. No, um, yeah. You mixed up your pace, which was really really lovely. I really want to hear how you do it. Actually, <laughs> oh, so, oh, the pressure's on. I, I just thought your voice lends itself beautifully to something like this. Actually, absolutely. Oh, I hope so. Let's hear it, Una. Yes. Let's hear you. Okay. Could summer surprise you if you go with the flow? Could it thrill and delight you? Could summer surprise you if dreams take flight? Could you soar like the birds do? Could summer surprise you if you drink it all in? Could the good times find you? Could summer surprise you if you make time for play and an ice cream or two? Could you leave cares behind you? To find a National Trust place near you, search National Trust NI. Oh, lovely. And I love the little giggle in ice cream as yes, well. Yes, absolutely. There's a little <laughs> catch, which I really liked. The poetry, uh, you were quite fast and you were much harder than Sam in, in in the poetry there. But you went quite quickly up to the third Could Summer Surprise You? Mm. And mm-hmm. then you slowed right down for If You Drink It All In. And I thought yes. that was lovely. I yeah, think really that nice. was maybe a note from from when I did it mm-hmm. uh, for the client, that, that, that they wanted that slowed down. Right. Um, that they, they, they wanted that more like a fine whiskey rather than a shot of tequila. Um, <laughs> nice. I, That's a nice yes, bit of direction. It really is, yeah. I think that when I when I first said it, I maybe said, if you drink it all in, could the good... And I, I put the emphasis on the yep. second part, the good whereas they, they wanted yeah. it on the, you know, drink it all in. And I quite understand that because if it's for a National Trust property, you do. You literally, mm. you want to go and you want to relax and you want yeah. to drink it all in. Absolutely. <laughs> How do you say that? Well, here's now the part of the show that can be completely off the wall, like you've just stepped into an improv class. Yes! It's the wild card section. So let's see if we can approach these scripts in a completely different way. Indeed. And Una, I think Mark is the lucky recipient oh, of your new motivation. So what 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 do you want oh, Mark to do? Fantastic. And which script? <laughs> Sorry, this is really enjoyable. There's a little bit of sadism coming out there. I feel like there's yeah. something brewing here. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm worried that that it's a bit too off the wall. Okay. Well, okay. We, we can, but try. My thought was that you would play the role of a Bond villain who didn't pay their last tailor's bill and has ended up with an outfit that is too tight. Ooh. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. So uncomfortable, so- uncomfortable Bond villain. 
Uh, well, yes. The okay. uh, you know you're meant to look very suave and sophisticated, <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, uh, your buttons are stretched. <laughs> uh, your trouser legs are far too short, oh. um, and instead of looking uh, very every inch a Bond villain, you uh, you just look a bit silly. Um, I think I, I think I know what um, stance I'm going to be standing in to to try and get the buttons not uh, <laughs> fitting properly. <laughs> This is a visual that we all want. Visualisation, everybody. Mark as a Bond villain with yes. very tight clothes on. So, Mr Bond, are vegetarians and vegans getting enough vitamin B12? While choosing a vegetarian or vegan diet may have many health benefits, there are also certain nutritional challenges. The recommended daily intake for vitamin B12 is only 2 micrograms. But you'd be surprised to know what this little amount is able to do in our body. <laughs> Vegetarians and vegans can easily become vitamin B12 deficient simply because the vitamin is only found in animal food sources. If you consume a strictly plant-based diet, you're hard-pressed to cover your need for this particular Nutrient. Mm. <laughs> that was fab. <laughs> Would you like to know how I'm standing? Uh, yes, tell us. I have one hand on my chest, ah. like pushing quite hard, and one hand on my stomach, pushing in quite hard. Oh, so you were very buttoned Feels, up sort of yes, thing. Yes, I felt buttoned ah. up. Mm. <laughs> and then I had to keep remembering that I was a Bond villain. Bond, Mr. Bond. <laughs> good one, Una. That was a really good one. Excellent. Uh, so next, um, you're going to go, Una, but I'm going to get Sam to suggest yours. Yes, I'm okay. going to make. I'm going to have you do your script. Okay. Your script. But I'd like you to. You are an acting teacher <laughs> at the front of your class. You're probably, if you imagine, you're probably on the stage and they are all, you know, looking down at you and you are trying to encourage them to do their next load of scenes together. So you're okay. an acting Aww. tutor. Okie dokie. Hmm. I'm just uh, just popping into my uh, lycra. Uh, ah. Lycra, unitard, my oh, leggings. The visualisation today is just well, <laughs> blowing me away, quite frankly. Could summer surprise you? If you go with the flow, could it thrill and delight you? Could summer surprise you? If dreams take flight, could you soar like the birds do? Could summer surprise you if you drink it all in? Could the good times find you? Could yes, summer yes. surprise you <laughs> if you make time for play and an ice cream or two? Not now. Could you leave <laughs> cares behind you? Yes, yes. To find a National Trust place near you. Search National Trust NI. And relax. Nice. <laughs> oh my. I wasn't expecting the kind of song bit at the beginning. That that no. kind of I thought, oh, that's clever. I also feel as though you were probably in first position with your with your yeah. chest out quite yeah. a bit. I, yeah, yes. that although I am sitting down, yes, I definitely was. I had my uh, my hands very much down in the in the ballet pose. <laughs> ballet pose. Sort of sort of willing willing these kids to please get your lines right. Well, one for Sam now, and I'm going to pick the one for Sam. Oh. Um, I'm going to go with script two, so I'm going to go with Una's script. Right. But I think it works with this character. Yes. I would like you to be an archetypal market trader. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> OK. Fruit and veg <laughs> on, a, on a market stall. All right. <laughs> Fine. All right, madam. Could uh, could summer surprise you? Yeah, look, if you go with the flow, could it thrill and delight you? Could summer surprise you? Look, if dreams take flight, could you soar like the birds do? Could uh, summer surprise you? If you uh, drink it all in, could the good times find you? Could summer surprise you? If you make time for play 
Yeah, and an ice cream or two. Here you go. Could you leave cares behind you? Yeah. Look, madam, to find a National Trust place near you, just search National Trust NI. Free for a pound. Uh, yeah, really good. <laughs> really good. That was amazing. I could totally see you behind, oh, me the, behind the vegetables, yeah. wearing the tabard. <laughs> Brilliant. And I didn't quite know how that was going to go. I thought that was really good. My, my critique of myself would be, it was uh, it was stereotypical, but we all fall back on stereotypes when we're mm-hmm. asked to do something quickly. I asked you to do an archetypal I guess, um, yeah, market yeah, yeah. trader. So yeah, I, that yeah, was yeah, what yeah. I was looking for. So that was yeah. good. I loved how that was. That was the full experience as well. And I, <laughs> yes. you, you started out, you were, uh, we have a we have a very famous market in Belfast and uh, you do hear the, the market traders from the, the fruit stall um, are very fond memories of it when I was younger of them, them calling out and you had the whole thing there. You called out at the start. You brought someone over. You, I could see a transaction happening, even though yes. I knew that this yeah. was a this was a different script. Uh, the transaction, and then you finished the transaction, and and that was just <laughs> that was beautiful. As we've been on this kind of visualization thing, it was you gave me enough information there, mm-hmm. um, Mark, as a, as an idea to think what I had, and I did see my fruit and veg in front of me. As nice. It were. Uh, you know Very what I mean, nice. and I did visualise what. what yeah. it, so it is really useful to do that. I think. Yes, it is. Mm. That, that that I mean, we we often say that, but it's good. <laughs> and if anybody else wants to become a market trader, the scripts <laughs> are in the show notes. So yes. why not have a go for fun in the comfort of your own booth? Absolutely, good idea. And please keep sending in or sharing your ideas for wild cards. We'd love to hear from you. You can either DM us on Instagram at hdyst podcast or email us at podcast at britishvoiceover.co.uk. And now, it's question time. Mm. And our question this week is all about (laughs) editing skills, something very dear to Mark's heart. (laughs) So how proficient... Okay, guys, how proficient do you really need to be as a voiceover? How proficient are editing? My editing, I think, is quite good. However, do not ask me the names of what all the buttons do. <laughs> I, <laughs> I I have a system uh, that I use and I, I think I do okay. Yep. I have been I've been told by by a producer. Thank you so much. That was absolutely perfect. The mm-hmm. editing was spot on. So I know that I can do a good job. I probably just couldn't show anyone else how to do it. Up uh, there. So you couldn't <laughs> oh, teach someone okay. but you know what you're doing yourself. No, no, that's good. That's good. Yeah. That's right. From my perspective, Sam, uh, mm. because I began in radio, mm. I began old enough to have quarter inch tape and a razor blade. So mm. you have to really understand what's happening in the in the imagined waveform to mm. cut the tape in the right place. And then suddenly when digital editing came in and you could see the waveform, yeah. it was much easier. You yes. can really see exactly where you're editing, where that razor blade cut would be. And I still imagine like I'm editing with a razor blade. Mm-hmm. Oh, Weirdly, really? after all these years, because that taught me that. But how useful, apart from the fact that you edit this podcast very, very well, <laughs> how useful is it for your average voiceover, do you I, think? I think I can package something for a client that I know is going to just drop it in their timeline and okay. I can give them what they know they want. Yes. I mean, I mean, I still prefer doing a directed session where they go off and do it all themselves. Yeah. But if it is a client that wants an end product, I'm happy to do that. Yes. Yeah, no, that what about sense. you? Well, well, I do think it's really important. And I do think it's something that voiceovers need to be really aware of now. It's very different from that uh, the, the, than the job was sort of 10, 15 oh, years yeah. ago where yeah. you, you, you didn't need to know necessarily mm-hmm. all of the... You didn't need to be a brilliant editor no. uh, or even a halfway good editor. No. So um, I think it's incredibly useful. Quite often we're asked to produce something that you can just drop on a timeline yep. and works over pictures. And so unless you are, you know, are red hot and you can bring the pictures into your door and actually voice to... Uh, picture, picture yeah. mm-hmm. then being able to edit it and knowing how to edit that to yeah. make it absolutely work is incredible. But also useful. giving an editor choices yeah. within that absolutely. on pacing and whatever I think is really important. But that's, yeah. that's understanding how you're voicing, but also yeah. how you're editing. And and yes. I think we, we've mentioned before home studio voiceovers, of, of which the majority of us are, need to have both skill sets. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I don't think you need to be able to mix music necessarily. No, nope. nope, not necessarily. Um, 
and you don't necessarily you know need how. to. I guess, no. but you, it's not often called for, no. and you don't need to do much post. True, true. In fact, the more post you do, sometimes the more irritated the client can get. Yes, can be, absolutely. Una, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. It has been brilliant. You've been really, really fabulous guest. <laughs> yeah, oh, thank you both fantastic. so much for having me. I've had loads and loads and loads of fun. Good. Oh, <laughs> thank you. And we will also be putting both of today's scripts, Mark's and Una's, in the show notes so that you can have a read yourself. And if you want to send them to us, we'd love to hear them. It's podcast at britishvoiceover.co.uk. Yes, and of course, all Una's details can be found in the show notes as well. It's the same email address for those wildcard suggestions, or you can DM Sam or myself on social media. And yes, if you enjoyed listening, we would love you to write a review on Apple Podcasts. Mm. Well, that's it for this week. We will be back next week with more scripts and another voiceover guest when we'll be asking, all together now, how do you How say, do that? You say that? How do you say that? <laughs>